Okay, um, I want to bring up this idea of that sometimes IR doesn't just tell you whether you have a functional group, but there are ways that IR can help you know whether a functional group is attached next to another functional group. So it does give you some what I would call connectivity information. This is a weak part of IR. IR doesn't do this very much, but there's this one case where it does come up and it can be fairly helpful. And it involves this idea of conjugation. Conjugation is most commonly where you have a, a double bond next to a single bond next to a double bond. So you have this alternation of, of a pi bond and a regular sigma bond and, and maybe another pi bond. And so you, you say that these, these bonds are conjugated, the two pi bonds are conjugated. It's really um, an example of resonance. So let, let's see conjugation in action. So we learned that a regular alkene typically shows up at about 1640 wave numbers. Well, here's a benzene ring. This molecule is ethylbenzene. And it contains what seemed to be just a bunch of carbon-carbon double bonds. So you might expect ethylbenzene to have a peak at 1640. As it turns out, its peak is not exactly at 1640. It's this weak signal right here. And it's really close to, instead, 1600. And you might say, ah, 1640, 1600, what's the difference? Well, that is a pretty big difference in IR. And that occurs because we have in this ethylbenzene, the benzene ring, we have a double bond, then a single bond, then a pi bond, and a single bond, and a pi bond, and a single bond. We have conjugation. The effect of conjugation is to lower the wave numbers. In this case, it lowered from about 1640 to 1600. Typically, conjugation drops things about 20, 20 wave numbers. Benzene is a little bit more exaggerated because you have more double bonds in conjugation, so we get a more dramatic effect. But benzene rings tend to show up around 1600. And that's the carbon-carbon double bond. But you might say, oh, carbon-carbon double bonds show up at 1640. Not when there's a lot of conjugation around. So that's one example of conjugation. Let's see a ketone, a conjugated ketone. So here's, I'm going to use benzene ring because it allows us to get conjugation. And here's a ketone attached to a benzene ring. Here we have a pi bond. There's our sigma. And here is our pi bond. This is an example of conjugation. We learn ketones normally show up at 1720 in an earlier video. Where is this ketone? It's at 1691. There it is, nice and big and strong, just like a ketone should be, but it's actually below 1720. So it, it moved a little more than what we said is a typical value, 20 wave numbers, but it, it drifted, it, it moved. 1720 and 1691, that is an important interpretable difference. It has lowered and it's because of conjugation, which is sort of the theme of this video. Okay, let's look at this last example. This is ben Again, we're going to use benzene ring to achieve our conjugation. And this is an ester. Again, it's a carbonyl that's undergoing conjugation. There's a pi bond, and there is just a regular sigma bond, and there is another pi bond. This is conjugation. So this ester is not going to be at the expected 1740. The shift is not as dramatic in this case. It's about 1728, which is kind of low for a typical es ester. So these are ways that we can identify that maybe our functional groups are, are in proximity to another functional group. And what you almost always look for is, do I have a double bond next to my other functional group, which is perhaps another double bond or a carbonyl? This is an example of conjugation. Sometimes it's a helpful tip on how your molecule is assembled. And um, like I say, you don't see this in IR very much. Normally it's simply, do I have a functional group or not? But sometimes you can get connection information out of infrared spectroscopy.